Hello, everyone. Welcome to another bonus podcast. My name is Thalia, one of the pastors on staff at Northview Community Church, and I am joined by my favorite co-host, Crystal. All right. I made the favorite list. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) So you are the pastor of what? Women. Okay. Women. Yes. I talked too fast there. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk today about what do we look for in ministry leaders? And we don't mean only women ministry leaders. Why, Crystal? Um, Well, we're talking in general about discussions that we've had at pastoral level and with different commissions and committees. Last night, we were at um, the men's ministry training night. Uh, Greg is leading a group of leaders um, for men's ministry. And so we talked about all these things there, too. So I think in general, we have a feeling at Northview of the different kinds of people we're looking for and the pieces we're looking for. Um, And so that's women or men, their characteristics that are not gender based. Right. Yeah. So we should probably start out by saying there's a difference between an attender and a leader. So I'll take the attender piece. We say that anyone can attend. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter your age, your stage in life, the color of your skin, your faith background, your language. Anyone can attend. There are exceptions to that, of course. That would be safety. In my six years of serving here at Northview, we've had two people that we've barred from attending. Uh, because of safety issues, Mm -hmm. uh, sexual predators that we've said, you cannot come here anymore. And three people that we allow if they have support, right? because they are too disruptive or it's just too chaotic if they come on their own. But if they have support, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. So this is for our weekend services. This Mm -hmm. is for our different Bible studies, um, all the different things we have. All of them are open. And so some people will say to me, can I bring my non-Christian friend to this event? Yeah. And we say, yes, like, as long as we, we don't want to ever be accused of kind of selling something that we don't provide, like we don't want to bait and switch people no. and say that, you know, they're going to expect something and then come here and we um, just push the Bible on them. No. As long as people know we're going to be studying the Word of God, they are welcome to come. Yeah. And so we've had people of, we had at least four people that I know of in women's ministry this year that came right away and let people know that they're not Christians. Yeah. And they just wanted to check this out. Yeah. And we have people that are... Um, in the process of fighting an addiction. We have people that are living together with their boyfriend or girlfriend. We have people that are struggling with same-sex attraction or are living in a homosexual relationship. Everyone is welcome. I can't state that enough. Unless they're going to cause harm to our congregation, that would be the only exception I can think of. Yeah. Yeah, we have people who are newly divorced, people who are grieving, people who yeah. are mm-hmm. like, in all different kind of life situations yeah. and all different ages and stages. Like yeah. all of our groups, I love looking around uh, a Bible study and seeing, you know, tables. There's one table I think of last yesterday that had a couple 20 something year olds and yeah. a couple 60 something year olds yeah. and a couple 40 something year olds in the middle. And it's just great to have that uh, intergenerational mixing. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if you're married or single. Mm -mm. Some people think, especially for women's ministry, that you have to be married with kids to participate. But we have lots of, it's a great place for single women and divorced women to get involved because they don't have to worry about feeling like they're the only one there without a husband. Yeah. And the plus of Northview is that we have a lot of different services. Yeah. So there are people in our community that are plugged into another church, but for a season they can't attend because of sports. So what I find is there's quite a few people that come Saturday nights to our church service, even though they attend another church service at a different time of year when the sports aren't impacting their church attendance. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. They want they value church and so for a time they're at Northview and then they go back to their other church. Yeah. And some people like um, small church and some people like big church. Yeah. So we're fortunate right now to have options for all those different people. Yes. We have, if you want really small church, we have Sunday night service, which yes. is like 50 to 75 people. Mm-hmm. And then uh, West Court would be the next kind of bigger size and then Center Court and then our worship center. West Just Court has about 200. And Center Court has 350. Yeah. And then the worship center is 1,000. Yeah. So yeah, this is the different options for different people. Yeah, I met somebody who wanted to get connected at Northview and say that they have trouble going to the worship center, which can seat up to a thousand people. And I said, well, did you know there's other options? And they had no idea. Yeah. So ask and us. they'd been here yeah. for a while. They had been here for a while. Yeah. So yeah, that's important to check out the website. Or you can go to Mission. Mission is an awesome congregation. Yeah. Uh, it's 350, 400 people, one service. Mm-hmm. So warm, so friendly. It's true. Uh, it's a great place to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. So a tender is different than a leader. So before we talk about ministry leaders, let's talk about people who want to serve in general. Yeah, so we, when we want someone to kind of represent Northview, we, we want that person to be a believer. So we're happy to have 
people who aren't Christians attending. But if they're representing us, we want to know that they actually have faith in yeah. Jesus, that they're wanting to follow him, yeah. that they're growing in their love for God, um, his word. They're growing in love for the church and regular participants here. Um, somebody who's willing to be um, not perfect, none of us are perfect, but willing to just kind of be held accountable for who they are, the way yeah. they're living, the way they're acting in the community, because they are representing, if people see them here on a weekend ushering, and then they see them at the hockey rink or see yeah. them, like they're representing our church. And yeah. so we want to know that they have just a passion for following Christ yeah. in a way that honors him. And if they mess up, they're going to be willing to apologize, yeah. be repentant, those kind of things. Now, there's a couple exceptions to that in the fact that on Saturday night, that's the venue I serve in most often. We have some parents who are ushers. And they are members in good standing and they're serving. And they have their kids or their teenagers who are maybe not yet Christians or maybe not yet members or anything like that serving alongside them. Mm -hmm. Or we might have somebody in the coffee ministry that brings along a non-Christian friend that day. And can that non-Christian friend serve that one-time coffee ministry? Yep. Yeah, they can. But on a regular basis, people who would serve regularly, we would say they need to be a believer, growing in love for God, His Word, yeah. local church. Yeah. Um, we also have kind of deacon traits that are in Scripture that kind of would um, validate this idea, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's for somebody that wants to serve in the church, there's different passages like 1 Timothy uh, 3, 2 to 13, and Titus 1, 5 to 9. And it talks about some of these, I'll just read it's a list of traits, it's not the exact passage, but they talk about people who are willing, who are above reproach, who are faithful to their spouse, temperate, self-controlled, so somebody that's not going to fly off the handle mm -hmm. all the time, that can control themselves in situations, that's respectable, hospitable, um, not given to drunkenness is on the list, uh, gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money, someone who manages their family well, uh, not a recent convert, someone who's sincere. Um, not a malicious talker or gossiper, someone who's trustworthy in everything. So these are some of the characteristics that scripture has about yeah. the people that we put in leadership. We want them to be people who are, like I said, not perfect necessarily, but kind of demonstrating that there's fruit of the spirit in their life, that they're yeah. trying to live in accordance with God's word. Yeah. And that comes out in some of these different specific things that it, yeah. that it lists. So to serve in general... A lot of positions don't require membership, but there are some positions that require membership to serve. Yeah. What would those be? Well, the ones with more um, kind of oversight, I would guess. Like, so someone for who's going to be an elder for sure. Yeah. Um, someone who's doing a lot of teaching. It's like a, so a, in our care courses that we have, like our divorce care, yeah. grief share, those kind of courses. If we have things like our, uh, I don't know, resolving everyday conflicts, some mm -hmm. of the other courses we've offered. We won't, And um, if we're large group teaching and women's ministry yeah. or men's ministry, we want those people to be members because um, that shows that they're willing to be accountable to this church. Yeah. They're willing to be under the leadership of the church, yeah. that they're willing to, um, that they kind of sign off on our theological position because mm -hmm. we don't want someone teaching a whole group of people that has a different position on the end times or a different position on, you know, some of the major core doctrinal issues. Yeah. Sorry, not that end times is majorly core, but it is something we want to know about ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. So some of the core issues, especially about the nature of Christ and Jesus yeah. and uh, who God is, the Trinity, those kind of pieces. We want to make sure that people have the same um, theological understanding that we would have as leadership. Yeah, we consider people who are members to be kind of like our sheep. Yeah. These are the people that are our ministry partners. We really depend on our members. So that's really important to us. And I've been thinking that membership is even more important now at Northview because we are considering expansion. Yeah. Local churches in our area, global local churches, um, sorry, global churches that we're establishing across the world. We are considering an expansion on our site, a new building, and these are all going to require voting. Yeah. And you can't vote unless you're a member. Right. So this is really important as we go forward in our church. But not everything requires membership. So you might want to explore that a little bit if you want to serve. Yeah. Now, it's easy to become... Um, to serve, most positions require a criminal record check, which is online. The church pays for it. It's pretty easy. Yeah. So our, whoever you, whichever ministry that you kind of want to be part of, um, you would contact them and they would send you a link to yeah. this online thing. You just fill it in and the church pays for it. So you don't have to go take time out of your day, go to the police station, yeah. do all these things. So it's easy that way. Only yeah. if you have like the same name as somebody else in town and they don't have distinguishing yeah, things. Yeah. There's been a few times yeah. when people have had to go in. Um. 
Yeah, so the reason we do that is for protection of people. We yeah. obviously want to know if there's an issue that we need to be aware of. We want to protect especially our vulnerable people, like our yeah. elderly and our young and our kids. We want to make sure that people um, have either don't have a criminal record check or sorry, either don't have a criminal record or um, if something does show up on their record check that we have an opportunity to talk to them about it. It doesn't necessarily preclude them from membership. No. Nope. Um, it might, or yeah, from membership or from serving. It might be something that happened, you know, 20 years ago, but it's yep. helpful for us to know if ever an accusation came to the church, if somebody ever said, do you know this? And we said, yes, we know. And we've talked about it. And that's a different story. So yeah. we just want an honest understanding of who our people are. Absolutely. So, yeah. The other thing we should talk about is that anyone who wants to serve has to be approved by our pastors. Mm -hmm. This is a, a Google Doc that we have, and all of the pastors, we see the names on there and the position they want to serve, and we say unknown to us, if they are unknown to us, or approved. And if there's any concern, like if we have a yellow flag of caution or a red flag, we simply go to the person that they would be serving under and have a very private discussion. This is nothing that the pastor sit around and gossip about. No. Um, it's only we raise the flag of, ah, I have a caution here. For this person to be in yeah. this role. Yeah. Yeah. And again, even those cautions don't necessarily mean that that person is not able to serve. But there's been a, a few times where um, someone like one of our pastors has come up to me and said, um, before you approve this person for ministry, you need to know this about them because yeah. they know a bit of the story. And that's just been really helpful for me to know or to follow up with that person to see if they've dealt with this problem in their life or the situation or if there's you know certain stresses on their life that I need yeah. to know about, those kind of pieces. And so, yeah, so it's a, it's a document that once a week, our executive assistant Cecilia sends out to us and we have to just work through all the new names that mm -hmm. have come in in this last week and say whether we, you know, wholeheartedly approve them. If we don't know them and if none of the pastors know them, then there's a separate protocol that has to happen where somebody has to actually interview this person, get to know them um, because we don't want unknown people on our, in our, in our ministries. Yeah. We want people to be known, to be interviewed. Um, and we encourage people to spend at least six months here before they even volunteer for things so that they can become known yeah. to people so that we can kind of see their character over yeah. some period of time. And um, my personal preference would be if people would simply attend and participate and enjoy men's and women's Bible studies and all kinds of things for a yeah. year. So I think you should sort of see the life of a church for a year before you serve. Yeah, we. I was just actually at our first membership class for this next semester. We have three classes that go every, I don't know, three times a year or so. And so the last one just started this last Tuesday. And Jeff talked quite a bit about our culture at Northview. And he said, if this doesn't feel like a good fit for you, yeah. this might not be a place. And sometimes yeah. people don't really get that. But we've had, like Northview is very uh, lighthearted, very jokey, very lots of kind of ribbing and banter. And we've had people say to people, I don't know if I could work there. Like, it just feels like there's too much sarcasm or there's too <laughs> much, like, it doesn't feel like my culture. And so you want to get in the know of, you want to get the feel of a culture of a place before you kind of say whether you're in or not, I think. Yeah. And I think you want to experience the teaching from the front and the worship and how we do life at Northview to see if it works for you. Yeah. And that's okay. We have lots of great churches that we can um, totally. um, if recommend If doesn't feel a good fit, then there might be other ones. Yep. Yeah. And of course, there's an application if you want to serve. Yeah, because we are a large church and in the small church I grew up in of 100 people, you knew everybody. There was right. no such thing as an application and pastoral approval and any of this kind of criminal rector check, nothing, because you knew the 100 people that were there. You knew them well. You had lunch with them. You you sat beside them. You served yeah. with them in every possible capacity for years. Yeah, It's different at Northview because we are a large church. Yeah. And because we are in a society that quickly will um, resort to suing and legal actions, yeah. we have to be careful that we're covered. Yeah. And I think smaller churches need to be aware of these things for sure. Like even the yeah. criminal record check, it's just as, well, I think it's mandatory for a lot of insurance policies now, yeah. liability pieces, because you just need to be able to prove that you did your due diligence if anything does happen in your congregation, Yeah, even if it's people you know. So I think one more thing you should know about if you want to become a member of Northview is that you need to be baptized as an adult. Mm, that's right. And so now they've had the baptism class as the first class, if anyone wants to do that. And then they have the three membership classes right following after. that. So yep. people can do the baptism and then continue the next three to do membership. Yeah. So that's kind of helpful. Yeah. And then you are interviewed at the end of those classes 
by a pastor or an elder, and then you have a chance to ask all your questions and get known a little bit and hear your story of where you've come from. Yeah. Those interviews are super encouraging. Yeah. I find. Yes, they are. Yeah. I enjoy doing them. Yeah. They're a highlight. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's move to a leader. So we talked about a tender, we talked about a leader, and in the leadership, we talked about serving in general. Yeah. But now we want to talk about like an actual, like a leader, like a kids ministry teacher, like a youth leader, a worship leader, a large group teacher for women's ministry or a Bible study or elder, that kind of thing. What yeah. are we looking for? Um, well, we are looking for those deacon traits, like we talked about, the ones that are in 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1. Mm-hmm. We're looking for people like to demonstrate that they love God and His Word. Yeah. So I was talking to a woman's ministry leader once, and she said, I'm trying to get all these people in my leadership team because I know in the business world they're good leaders, but none of them have a vision for it. And I said, well, don't necessarily look for the leadership kind of outward markers first. Like, look for, do they love God and His Word? Because yeah. it doesn't matter if they're a great business leader. If they don't love in God and His Word, they're not going to be a good women's ministry leader. No. And so I think we want to look like... Are people like seeming to soak up the sermons? Are they, yeah. when you're in their teaching, when you're teaching them, like, do they have eye contact? Are they like wanting to engage with the scriptures? Do mm -hmm. they s just demonstrate a love for God and his word in their, in their way they speak and the way they pray? Um, do they love the church? So we sometimes have people come and they'll put up their hand saying like, I want to be a leader. But then there's this super sporadic like yeah. they come every once in a while, they maybe come three weeks in a row, and then they won't show up for the rest of the semester. So is there a kind of a love demonstrated by an active participation? Yeah, a faithful, consistent attendance. Yeah. Yeah. And then are they seeking to live in line with scriptural teachings? That's that idea. Like, are they wanting to be, are they wanting to grow and are they wanting to, um, yeah, repent if they make a mistake? We're looking also for people who have good social skills, yeah. who are stable emotionally, yeah. um, who are good at moving conversations around. Yeah. Sort of like that piece of looking out for others rather yeah. than yourself. Because there's a lot of people who come to our ministry that, of course, um, are in process, as we all are, and they are just simply consumed with themselves and their life and their conversations. But for a leader, it needs to be different. We need yeah. to be looking out for other people who are new, other people who are alone. We need to be having conversations that involve people with just that one of that outward looking kind yeah. of a person. Kind of initiating rather than asking, yeah. waiting for people to come to them. Um, those are huge. It's yeah. just a little thing, but it really differentiates the leaders in the group from the just the attenders. Yeah. I also look for people who are willing to be eyes and ears for the leader of that particular ministry. Yeah. So women's ministry, I'm looking for people who are eyes and ears for Crystal, for myself, for the other leaders, people who are watching out like, did you know we don't have enough people serving coffee in the kitchen? Yeah. We don't have any greeters today. What can we do about that? Hey, it would be really great if we had some prayer before or after. People who are really watching for the pieces that might be weaker or the pieces that might be missing, the eyes and ears. Yeah. And I think in the midst of that, um, you can say those things in a way that's positive or in a way that's negative. Yeah. So how do they even bring those things to your attention? Because some people will like gripe and complain and Northview yeah. doesn't do this and we don't have that and why don't they do this and blah, blah, blah. And other people will say, oh, I see there's a need for this. How could we solve this problem? <laughs> like yeah. It's just a different, there might be the seeing the same problem but how do they approach it? Yes. That is a huge thing we look for. Yeah. And in my position as care pastor, I really also appreciate the people who will tattle respectfully. <laughs> so what I mean by that is sometimes... Um, like, for example, I had an email from an elder and his wife, and they realized that there were some people coming to church that they know from the community that have been really difficult and disruptive and divisive. Uh, very divisive and have been asked to stop attending a different church. And so they gave a, a long email, and I was really appreciative because then I can keep my eyes and ears open and alert other people so that we protect our people and we guide this particular uh, person well. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully bring them into a better place of wholeness. But yeah. Not sacrifice everybody for the sake of one person. Yeah, but I would, I'm okay with you tattle respectfully just to let me know a heads up if they're, or Paul or Vic on the care team, anybody, Crystal, whoever, just let us know. That's really helpful. Totally. Yeah. We're also looking for people just who are willing to submit to the authority of leaders. Yeah. And so we've had situations where um, we've kind of set a direction as leaders and there's somebody that's constantly kind of bucking it or yeah. like just not quite following what we've asked or kind of skirting the way around it. And that's just not helpful. No. <laughs> it just derails everybody for the sake of that person yeah. or it just kind of derails the, the uh, ease of it. It feels like you're always having to kind of discipline someone who's a leader. Yeah, that's really important. 
Um, Crystal, you had some other maturity markers of what you would look for in in a leader. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think what they were. So, yeah, some of them are observing how they manage conflict. Um, So some people, when conflict comes, they'll either ignore it, they don't want to deal with it at all, or they'll get like super involved in it right away and get Mm -hmm. really defensive or really um, just kind of wrapped up in conflict. Um, There's one woman who specifically I've worked with in the past who just so uh, I was just so blessed by her because she would experience a period of conflict or something. And she would say, I'm just going to go away and pray about this, think about it, and then can we talk about it later? And I thought, wow, like that's an amazing way to Mm. handle conflict. Like she wasn't wanting to right away say what was at the tip of her tongue or what she was feeling frustrated about, but she wanted to, but she wasn't just pushing it aside. Yeah. So I think that's a huge thing. How do we manage conflict and even like theological disagreements? Yes. Like are we comfortable with having a push and pull with somebody or do we get super defensive if somebody think something differently than we do. Well, I think of the emails that sometimes come to some of the pastors after they speak. Yeah. And some of the emails are not kind. No. And it would be better if we would engage in a respectful conversation face to face or yeah. even a respectful conversation on email just saying I didn't understand. Could you clarify? Help me to know what's going on here a little bit. I don't I don't think I'm necessarily on the same page yet. But the nasty emails are not okay. That's not a mark of maturity. No, like and nothing anonymous. It has no. to, well, that well, does not show maturity. Worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the thing I've been surprised at is sometimes people will kind of indicate that they like to be leaders or like to be given a role, and then I give them an opportunity to learn and to grow, and they don't take me up on it. Mm. And then other people who are kind of maybe more in the background, or I wouldn't necessarily pick as leaders. When I say, "Hey, here's an opportunity to learn something new," to to improve your skills, they jump at it. Yeah, And so that's one of the things I look for when I'm looking for leaders who is taking me up on my opportunities I'm giving them to say, you can grow as a leader by doing this. And they're reading that book or they're listening to that podcast or they're attending a class we do. Like who feels, some people feel like they've already arrived and they don't need to grow. And then other people who are realize that they constantly could be improving themselves and they're just keen. Yeah. And so that is fun. It so is that fun. was fun. Like last night at this yeah. men's ministry leadership team for the men's ministry Bible study, there was like 40 guys in the room mm-hmm. and they were like leaning in. They yeah. were wanting to learn and yeah. grow and kind of think about things. And that's just so fun yeah. to see. And many of them we've seen serving in other areas or leading in other areas. It was really great to meet them. Yeah. Yeah. We also look like you said, kind of social skills. We look for people who are appropriate sharers yeah. of information. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't want somebody that, that's so close that you never get to know them. Right. But we don't want people that just like dump <laughs> all of their stuff on everybody the first time they right. meet them. Like we kind of look for what's appropriate in yeah. this situation. Yeah. Um, so that's a big <laughs> thing to be aware of, it right? Is, yeah. You don't want somebody just derailing conversations no. with sharing their own muck all the time, especially yeah. sometimes when it's not super appropriate <laughs> yeah. to talk to about everybody. Um, the other thing we look for is people who, uh, so sometimes what happens is if you're super keen, you just want to hang out with the other keeners. Yeah. You don't have any interest in people who don't have an interest in the Bible. You're kind of scornful of them or you're like, oh, I don't want to be around those kind of people. And we set up kind of these tiers within our Bible studies or Christianity and say, we're the keen Christians. You guys aren't, we're just going to hang out with the keeners. And what I love is when I see people that have just a heart for for kind of reaching out a hand to somebody yeah. that's like a few steps behind them and pulling them along. Yeah. I love to see people who have that heart for discipleship. Yeah. I think that's a huge mark of maturity. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to set up all kinds of rigid rules that say you have to jump through all these hoops before you're allowed to be part of our group. No. We want our groups to be grace-based. Yeah. To say you can come even if you can only come because you're a shift worker, you can only come part time if yeah. you have to drop your kids off at preschool. So you have to leave early every time and have to miss the prayer time, whatever. Like we want everything to be, let's encourage one another yeah, on this grace journey. Grace-based. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's not set up all kinds of hoops that people have to jump through. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important for us. That's part of our culture here that we've established, especially for women's ministry. And we were talking to the men about that too, about being grace-based. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think just like, We look for people who are big picture people, not small picture people, because some people will get caught up in these petty details and they can't see beyond them to see, oh, you know what? 
I can't, we can't focus all our energy in this one area because there's all these other things that we need to deal with. So yeah. we want people to, some people can get so, they have, they're so passionate about one thing that they can't see, well, maybe not everybody's as passionate about this, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And so I think we want people to see that big picture. Like there has to be give and take between things. Yeah. We can't like pray for two hours and not have any teaching. We can't have all teaching and no prayer. We can't yeah. have all worship and yeah. no teach. Like, like, like some people just get so caught in their zone because yeah. it's what they love that they just get frustrated by the other pieces. So, And I think a specific piece to Northview for leaders would be now at Northview, if you want to be a leader, you have to be open to change. Oh, yeah. We are always changing. Yeah. Starting this program, dropping this program, changing our service times, oh, adding a new venue, um, all kinds of changes, like every week, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. And so if you're not comfortable with frequent change, you probably shouldn't be in a leadership position. No, because that's constantly, we're always trying to figure out is this ministry serving its purpose? Is yeah. it actually making disciples? And if it is, is it doing it the best way it could? Like yeah. we need to tweak something, change something, add something, drop something. That's yeah. always part of our mentality. And so if you're somebody, yeah, that is just resistant to that and just wants to kind of stay in a, in a path and keep with it, there's not necessarily something wrong with it, but we're constantly evaluating and critiquing. Yeah. And our leaders hopefully would back up the pastors and elders and not sidetrack them or un undermine them or anything like that. So, for example, yeah. starting July long weekend, we are going to change our service times. So Saturday will stay the same, 530, but Sunday will be nine o'clock in the morning and 11 in all the venues. Mm -hmm. And so our key leaders, we would really hope that they would say, OK, that means I have to adjust where I've been attending and what time I've been attending, but I'm on board. I think this will be good for our church if we have longer service times. Because they see the value of yeah. that and why we're doing it. We're not just doing yeah. it higgledy piggledy. We have no. reasons for it. We have been having one hour service times, 8.30, 10, and 11.30. And it's not enough to grow good disciples. An hour service is too short. And so our leadership has decided we need to go back to having a little bit longer services where we can have more prayer, more worship, more chance to interview missions, um, missionaries, or things like that. Like we need to have more discipleship time yeah. on our weekend services. Yeah. And more time in between services for people to visit so they don't have to feel like they have to rush out. Yeah. So if you could help us out, if you're serving or if you're in leadership, with that, that would be great. Because yes, I know it's going to be hard if you've been attending the 10 o'clock service, which oh, yeah. is the best time ever. <laughs> totally. Other than Saturday night. Um, <laughs> you are going to have to figure out if you're going to go 9 or 11. Mm -hmm. And I know they're not perfect those those times. Which is part of the thing, because 10 o'clock was way too perfect. I Everybody know. Everybody wanted to be here at 10. You can still I have know. your nice coffee and sit on your couch for a while. And I <laughs> totally get it, because yeah. if I'm not out on Saturday night service, we've been going at 10 o'clock as well. <laughs> We're part of the problem. <laughs> I know we, I have been part of the problem sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Any more before we move on to frequently asked questions? I think the one thing I would say is uh, when we ask someone to serve, we'll kind of give them a job description of what we expect. But we don't want people who are say, well, that's not my job. That's so-and-so else's job. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't have to stack chairs or I yeah. don't have to help with coffee or I yeah. don't have to because my job is this and throw yeah. other people under the bus. Yeah. I think we want people to have like just a heart for service yeah. and to say, this is kind of what we're expecting of you as a table leader. But if you can kind of jump in wherever you see there's a need, we'd love that. If you're willing to go help in childcare every once in a while, if you're willing to just move beyond kind of the we don't want to be so rigid in our job descriptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. So frequently okay. asked questions. We have three on the board. Mm -hmm. If someone says to you, Crystal, I've served at another church. How can I be a leader here? What would we say? Well, we'd say, first of all, like we've said on some of these other things, like, first of all, why don't you attend here for a while? See if this is a good fit for you. And then get to know the church as well as you can. So that if you are a leader, you know how to tell people where to go for different things or different events that are happening during the week. Um, see if you can be part of um, like our, one of our women's Bible studies or men's Bible studies or a community group. Get involved in serving somewhere. Yeah. Get to know the DNA. Get to know some of the people. Pay attention to things like what are the d big events that are going on. Yeah. Um, you can go to our uh, our meetings, even if you're not a member, yes. you can come and just Annual see, general meeting. Yeah, get a feel for that. Um, get to know some of the pastors and elders, just like making an effort to um, be in relationship with people. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, yeah, get, get a feeling for yourself of the church and um, get to know some of the leaders so that when your name does come up on a list, a pastor can say, oh, I can approve this person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about this question? What if someone sees someone in leadership, like a worship leader, a youth leader, a kids ministry leader, and they are uncomfortable with their actions or behavior? What should they do? So 
Maybe they know that in they serve or something that they do outside of yeah, the community. Like, yeah. Maybe they serve on the weekends, but this person knows that they frequently get drunk throughout the week or they are um, mean with their words and their actions outside of church or I don't know. Yeah. You can probably fill in the blank with all kinds of things that we can think, ah, what? are they a yeah. leader? When we, Why are yeah. they a leader at Northview? Does the church know about what's going on behind yeah. the scenes? Yeah. So I'd say the first step would be to contact, I think our care department would be the best place to start there. Yeah. So that would be Thalia, Paul, or Vic. Um, and just express the concern to them. It might be something that you guys are already working with, with yeah. this person. You might be aware of it. But if you're not, that's super helpful for you guys can then can initiate that discussion. That respectful tattling kind yeah. of idea. Yeah. yeah. And it may be like we've, I've had some times where someone's come to me with an issue like this and they said, but I don't want you to talk to them. And I said, well, then you have to. <laughs> He's yeah. their friend. Like if you don't want the church to get involved, then maybe it's your role. Like it talks about in James 5, like if you can walk alongside your brother or sister and bring them back into the faith, you've saved them from a multitude of sins. And so yeah. maybe it's your job um, to talk through that with them and we can kind of help prep you on how you could do that. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think we need. We don't want to just let something slide if we know that there's a disconnect between someone's personal life and their kind of professional life or life at church. Uh, Galatians six one says, if you know that someone is in a sin, that you should restore them gently. So yeah. the best kind of sort of church discipline is if you go one on one to that person you know that is sinning and say, "Hey, I know that you're a Christian. I know you're involved in Northview, and I see this happening in your life. Could we talk about it?" Yeah. That's very hard to do. Yeah. I, to, and you can talk to us and we can kind of coach you through that. But that yeah. would be the best if it was one-on-one -on -one with a friend who is obviously cares about the person and has that discussion. Yeah. And it may not work as well as you want it to. And no. it may hurt your friendship, yeah. but it may be what's needed in the long run. Yeah. So we don't want to shirk that responsibility. No. Okay. What about, Crystal, training options for leaders? Yeah. You don't have to just be a leader and stay static and have no training. What no. are the options? Um, well, we have tons. So first of all, with our men's and women's Bible studies, if you are, or community groups, if you're a leader in that group, we have three breakfasts every year where we do training for that. And you can be part of that. You can get to know other leaders, be part of those training breakfasts. Um, if you are, uh, we have a Thursday morning theology class. If you're interested in learning more about theology, you could come at 6 a.m. on Thursdays. <laughs> Woo. Six till seven thirty. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to come at six a.m., there's books we can recommend. Uh, yeah. Either the book, the, the systematic theology book that Wayne Grudem goes through, or or that they go through. It's written by Wayne Grudem. Or um, there's other books that are kind of different versions of that kind of a thing that we can recommend to you for reading. There's different podcasts that people can listen to that will teach you theological truths. And actually, this our Thursday morning theology class. One thing they're instituting next year is a half an hour podcast after the class where they're just going to kind of debrief what they talked about at the Thursday morning theology and yeah. some of the things that came up so that if you can attend, you could read the chapter and then listen to that. Yeah, uh, We have different courses that we offer um, put on by the Simeon Trust. If you just Google simeontrust.org, there's all kinds of online courses that you can get, which are like seminary level courses, which have been so beneficial to mm -hmm. a lot of our women leaders and our men's Bible study is starting to use some of those. We also have a Bible overview class, which we cannot recommend highly enough. Yeah, uh, Thalia and I, we've actually made it mandatory for anyone taking or being a leadership in large group leadership in women's ministry, mm -hmm. because it's one of those foundational courses that really helps you make sense of the Bible as one whole book. Yeah. And so we're going to offer that next year on Monday nights. And if you're interested in coming and you're a woman, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you'd be welcome to come. That'll be great. What are you going to walk through with your women's and men's Bible study next year? Yeah, we're excited about that. We are. So this last year we did First Corinthians, and so we thought we would do Old Testament next year. And so we're going to walk through the book of Exodus. Ah. So we have 19 weeks of study. We've divided the book up into 19 weeks, and um, it's going to be really good. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. So Monday night and Wednesday morning for mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. and men will be Wednesday night. Yeah. And if you're interested, what we're going to do last year over the summer, in order to help people stay in God's Word over the summer, we did a Bible reading kind of plan, and we met twice just to talk about things. So this year, we thought if people were, if we're studying Exodus in September, we'd encourage people to read through Genesis over the summer, oh, okay. and we're going to put out a, just a little reading plan, yeah. and we have two nights 
two Thursdays, one at the end of July and one at the end of August, where we're going to meet together. Anyone who wants to come and just talk about is this for women or women? Men? Yeah, okay. just the first half of Genesis. And the You'll second have half to tell Genesis. Greg and <laughs> yeah, maybe, no, maybe he'll have a men's night. <laughs> but we thought, it, what a great way to get ready for the study of Exodus is yeah. reading the book before it and knowing the story. Yeah, that's a good idea. So yeah, I think that's all we have. Mm-hmm. So Crystal, would you close us in prayer? Sure. Lord, I thank you so much for our church and just for um, the enthusiasm that's here for people to grow and to learn to lead. I thank you, Lord, for all the men who are at that um, ministry night that we were at yesterday and their their enthusiasm for leading the men's Bible mm-hmm. study groups. I thank you for so many women who have stepped forward wanting to be in leadership uh, for women's ministry. And I just thank you for their hearts to serve you and their hearts to grow in your word. Um, I th- I know, Lord, that you're doing that all over this world and all over the Lower Mainland and in many different churches. And so I just pray, Father, that you would continue to draw people to yourself and that you would give them a love for your word and a love for their local church and a desire to serve there and that you would just equip many more people to be your ambassadors mm-hmm. here on the world. And so, Lord, we just pray for people who are considering uh, wanting to step into leadership at Northview or other churches, Lord, would they t- spend time over the summer uh, maybe thinking through their own lives and examining their own hearts and seeing how they could grow so that they could be used more effectively by you um, in their churches. So we just thank you, Lord, that you use us. We don't deserve uh, for you to use us. We're not perfect specimens of Christianity, and yet you allow us to represent you. And so we just thank you for that great honor of being able to partner with you in the ministry that you're doing in the world. Yeah. So I just pray your blessing on all who are listening. Um, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm.